crank that whip. Licorice whip. Oh, I completely forgot. Pearl's voice should be muffled here. In this shot, Connie is next to Lion and behind Steven. But in the next shot, she's moved up next to Steven and in front of Lion. Lion is supposed to be looking at Amethyst here, but instead it just looks like he's looking at where she was standing before she came up next to them. Oh. Hey, no fair. Hey, no fair. You dodged my clearly telegraphed deflect that would have very clearly hurt and maybe even cut something at worst. How dare you? <laughs> Ah yes, this is peak training. Connie smacking Steven's shield over and over again with no technique, no change in strategy to break past it. Her stance isn't even correct, what the hell is this? Starting with this shot, the animation takes a really sharp nosedive, and this shot is actually the perfect way to show how. There are several things that are really wacky about it. First of all, look at Amethyst's arm here. Ouch. Secondly, what kind of awkward direction is Connie's head turned in right now? In the next shot, we see that Connie is actually turned to the side and that her head is turned to face Amethyst. But here, she walks towards Amethyst in roughly the same position, meaning she's either walking sideways or backwards, depending on how this shot is animated. Thirdly, Connie's nose looks like it's on her forehead. Looking at what's available behind the counter here, why is the milk that this place sells only behind the counter? Why not put some in one of the fridges over to the right to make it more accessible to the customer? Also, where did Amethyst get these bags from? There weren't any behind the counter in the previous shots. Also, also, despite Amethyst taking possibly dozens of donuts, and also having stolen several sodas as well, Steven only sees it fit to give Sadie $1 bills and Connie only gives coins. Maybe Steven and Connie weren't prepared to have to cover this? But then why animate them giving Sadie this small amount of money in the first place? How? Not only should this gem have surfaced a while ago, who knows how long it was waiting under there for, but even if it did make sense for it to be underwater, how did nobody notice until now? Did it really stay so still that the water wasn't unnaturally affected at all? Also, I assume Jasper is still making her way over here. So then why did she let this one go ahead by itself? What if it ran off? Did she think it would be loyal to her somehow, despite it being scared of her and essentially being a wild animal while corrupted? What's the logic here? What was the plan? In this shot, the gem's back legs look pretty normal. They're about the size you'd expect. Then suddenly in this shot, the ends of them get way skinnier. There were two of them. Two of them? Did Pearl and Garnet just not tell Amethyst all the details of what happened in the Great North? Why? You'd think they would want to keep everyone on the same page in a situation as important as this. So wait, Jasper is here, but then where are Garnet and Pearl? I'd assume that since Garnet was tagging along, they'd have at least some idea where she was and where she's going. Surely they weren't just running off somewhere blindly. It really says something when this is another instance where Garnet using future vision could have really helped the plot here. Because if she did, then Garnet would have had an idea that this would happen and had her and Pearl come back. And considering that Jasper's in the ocean where her movement speed, and by extension the amount of places she can go, is very limited, then surely she wouldn't have been able to go anywhere very quickly and thus would cut down on the possibilities Future Vision has, right? Imagine how cool it would have been if Garnet and Pearl came back and all of the Crystal Gems and Stevani fought Jasper. And it still could have tied into Amethyst's feeling of inadequacy by having her lag behind and almost getting herself poofed before having to be saved somehow. But with what we got instead, Pearl and Garnet being MIA for this episode feels not only forced, but completely preventable if the Chronoverse just used their characters' powers more. Rose said, I'm perfect the way I am. Then she had low standards. That's such a good raw line. I think that deserves a sin taken off on its own. However, the stripes that are on Jasper's face disappear in this shot. What the fuck is the corrupted gem doing here? Oh gee, an emotional moment is happening. I gotta give these two some space to watch it happen. Also, what is Connie's spine doing? Oh gee, an emotional moment is happening. I gotta just bend really awkwardly real quick. This entire sequence from this point onwards is absolutely golden in my opinion, and probably one of the best scenes this season. The sequence itself is really high stakes and energetic, with a fight that's engaging despite its simplicity. And the music is amazing. It's a shame I can't really play it, but it's called I'll Protect You. Look it up, it's great stuff. This scene alone makes the entire episode worth watching to me. It's that damn good. Amethyst Gem disappears from Stevani's hand in this shot. 
Wait here, I'll protect you. Her gem seems very vulnerable to being stepped on here. She's literally right in front of Lion. They couldn't have at least put her down two feet further to the side. Why would she just stand there and do nothing in that situation? Oh, hey, you want me to hold this shield for you? Sure, what exactly are you gonna do while I- Oh my god! Hmm, I guess she lives in the ocean now. What you gotta be is loose.